Hi, this is Richard. We're going over some quick tips for Blender um, and some things that I use a lot. Showing you how to use uh, a few things that'll make your life a lot easier. This time we're talking about subdivision surface. It's a modifier, so you're going to come over here to your properties window to this little blue wrench and you're going to click on it and go add modifier and we're going to go to subdivision surface. What this does is it takes every edge and divides it in half. So now where I had this face, I had one face and if I go into edit you can see I haven't applied this modifier yet so it hasn't actually added those new polygons. Um, this orange box this is my actual shape and that one inside there is uh, what's going to happen after I apply the modifier. So you can see it took this face and turned it into these four here and it does that to each face while um, figuring out a point between these faces for the new vertices and the old vertices to go. So it actually is smoothing this out into a sphere. Now there's a few things over here that you want to take a look at. These are the properties of your modifier. And let's go ahead and make this big enough to see everything. Now I'm in edit mode, notice. So right here, this button here is showing using the modifier while in edit mode. That actually deforms my solid object, my mesh. If I click that, now you don't see it all. I'd have to tab into object mode and tab back into edit mode and I can work on it this way. That can be helpful if you are doing something where um, you want to be real specific about the shape. Turning that off is going to let you work with the basic shape before you use subdivision surface. So let's click that back on and now we still have this orange box. So we can click this next button here to apply this orange box to the deformed mesh. Now you see where the box is. And if we go to face select, this still acts as one face and this still acts as one face, just like it's the box and, well, it's been deformed by the modifier, but we haven't applied it, so these aren't actually polygons yet that we can do anything with. Now, this is where we would apply it. If we hit it in edit mode, it gives us an error. Modifiers cannot be applied in edit mode. So we'd have to tab into object mode to apply it. I'm not going to do that yet. I want to show you some other things. Then we can copy it and it adds another one down here. You don't really need to do that because you can just change it here. This view, this is the number of levels of subdivision that you're going to see in your viewport. Let's turn that up to two and you see how it becomes even more spherical because we took each of those polygons and divided those in each direction as well. It's a magnitude of two. So it grows exponentially the number of faces that you are creating. If we go into object mode, you'll be able to see up here where we started with six polygons, six sided cube. Now we have 96 and then we hit three and now we have 384 or we have 1,536. So very, very quickly, this adds up a bunch of different or adds in a bunch of polygons and it'll make your objects look really smooth and really round. Five and six, I wouldn't push it past there. There's no reason because look, if we go all the way back down to even two and we just hit smooth shading, that looks pretty good, especially from a distance. If you wanna be real close, then you might wanna go up to three or four. But that's only if you're doing something really specific because it is, it's gonna multiply your polygons really quickly. This one below it, render, even if I put this on four or five, if I only have render at one, watch what happens when I do a render of this. It's just going to render it like it's only one subdivision, one subsurf, uh, layer of subsurf. So be aware of that as well. If you make something look really nice and smooth and clean with this modifier and you don't apply it, then you render it. You need to be aware of what's in this box. And this can crash your system if you push it up too far. So be aware of that as well. And then optimal display, it's just going to change things a little bit on how you view them. Um, it's not going to render. It's kind of like occlusion cooling, I guess. Um, and then there's a different way here. Simple subdivision. We go. I'm not really sure what the difference is on simple subdivision. Maybe someone can explain it to me in the comments. I've never changed that option. So. Well, that's great. We turned a cube into a sphere. That's not very useful. We need to deform this before we apply it so that we can have specific shapes that we want. Let's go ahead and turn this uh, off so that we can see the box. And let's add in an edge loop with Control-R. 
Let me turn on my screencast keys real quick. Edge loop with control R. And then we click and we can drag it. Now look, when I drag it to the side, it's adding a very, very uh, angular curve because it tells it to start curving from this edge around this edge. So you can create effects this way. We've got a nice little bullet. We can do another one here and it'll lengthen it even more. Go that way, stretch it out more. But what if we want that to be a hard edge? Let's get rid of that edge loop. And we have this face selected. Let's hit Shift E. This is going to create a crease and see how it drags those sides out to this crease. And then if we go into Edge Select, we can select all of these edges. And then let's add a crease there. You just drag the mouse out. See how it pulls it to those sides? It's putting a crease in it there. You're telling it, don't round it here, even though you're subdividing it. And then let's go ahead and hit apply. Now that I've showed you creases and edge loops, control R is to add an edge loop. Click once and then you can slide it. Right click centers that, or you can left click where, you've, um, where it's been slid to. And of course you can click this loop cut and slide button as well. And then left click where you want it and then slide it and left click when it's there or right click to center it. So we did that and we added creases. Now you don't have to go all the way to this hot purple uh, color. You can do an in-between amount of creasing. Like if you want it right there, you can just click and you can undo this as well by going back in, see? So we could just pull it to here. Now you see they're dark purple, they're not bright purple. But let's... Uh, Leave it like that and I can show you what it does when we hit apply. So whoop, we go into object mode and apply this, go back into edit mode and you can see it's added all of these polygons in. Let's go into wireframe. There's nothing internal. It actually deformed this shape by that subdivision surface modifier. Well, why is this useful? Why is this a great thing? Because you can quickly add polygons to make a face. See, I have it right here. Let's turn this down. This was my basic face and you can see it's real lumpy. I'm going to edit mode. Very low poly. I've only got um, what 600 polygons in this face. That's very very low and you can tell that it's very very low. Let's switch this to flat. There's my polygons for my face and then let's turn our subdivision surface levels up to one. Well, that's even already looking better. That would be okay for like a low polygon game where you didn't need um, super a lot of detail and we smooth it out and it looks great. And two. Now that's a lot of polygons. That's, uh, what, 9,776? We smooth it out and it looks even better. And then we'll just push it to three. And now it looks really, really good, really smooth, just like skin. You don't see any of those hard creases from the polygons anymore. This is the power of subdivision surface. You can use it in little ways or big ways. And then if we go back into edit mode, you can see where I've added creases around the mouth to uh, make the lips pronounced above and below the lips to uh, show some of the definition there. Here around the nose and the eyelids, the um, eye socket and the eyebrow. Just so that those areas don't get as smooth and so that it adds a little bit more character to the model. And then you can go in here and you can sculpt all over this. So that's what subdivision surface is. That's why it's a great thing and why you would want to be um, aware of how to use it and when to use it. So I hope that's helped you out and we'll see you in the next video.